Tonight's review, the Cuban Trinidad, Edition Limitada 2010, Robusto T. Welcome to the Dr. Joe Show. This is another Dr. Joe review, cigar review. It is review number eight of 365. <laughs> eight straight, my friends, and counting. And uh, tonight is a Cuban night. I hope you have enjoyed uh, the reviews thus far. I think they've been coming out pretty well. Um, from what I can see, I mean, you know, I'm a little biased that they are by me, <laughs> but uh, I think they're not half bad. I mean, I, you know, look, email me, comment, see, uh, let me know what you guys think. And uh, tonight is a Cuban night, and that is a good thing because, uh, you know, tonight I want to try a cigar that a lot of you have probably already tried, especially if you're into the uh, Edition Limitada range. And tonight we have the Trinidad. Edition Limitada Robusto T, uh, 2010, short Robusto T, excuse me, uh, Robusto T is a standard Tolo. So, you know, I wanted to try this cigar because it is 2014, which means these cigars are on the cusp of becoming vintage, you know, the four-year rule, which honestly, to me, to me, I think a good, I mean, hey, I don't, I don't know who makes the numbers, but I, I guess it has to do with how long it takes the really bad tannins to leave the cigar, you know? It's got to be something kind of scientific behind that. And we know from last night's episode how cool that shit can be, or the part of this short episode the, uh, about the cigar burning and everything. But um, to me, a vintage cigar, I mean, I would, I would say seven years, you know, seven and, and on. Uh, but that's just me, because a lot of cigars that I've tasted that are four years old, you know, they're, they're probably, they are, uh, smoother and better uh, in a lot of cases than their brand new counterparts, but uh, I think it's around seven years where a cigar really starts to, you know, get to its peak uh, as far as that goes, but who knows, whatever, it's not up to me. So um, we're going to smoke this little guy because, like I said, it's on the cusp of becoming a vintage cigar, which means vendors who have these left uh, will probably pump up the price a little bit based on the fact that it's over four years old especially when boxes start dwindling down to you know a number in the you know low hundreds and there aren't many left They're, they have so many oh my god man I mean like you know I was emailing a guy about the cigar boom somebody had a question and you know I was talking about how numbers in 2011 reached that not only reached that but far exceeded the the number of you know cigars being imported at the height of the cigar boom, uh, you know, so it's like, that's a lot of cigars, man. Um, interest is climbing. Interest is still climbing in domestic cigars, and at the same time, you have more and more people every day who, who get on the uh, Cuban boat, you know, and it's just, you know, it's growing, it's growing. I, I can tell because, you know, I, I look at these things, you know, I have did my knife thing for a long time, Knife Maker's Database, and, and on that website, and, you know, I could tell. I knew when custom knives were hot, and I know when they're not, and right now, they're kind of in a, in a rut, you know? What knives that used to sell in, in a week to uh, two weeks when I used to put them on site, they sit there for months. People don't, people aren't, you know, there are people out there, collectors and people who are still obsessed with them, but the fad of it, the people who, who are going to get in and get out, that's not over you know, um, for, for, Cuban, for the cigar um, range, and uh, so they're very popular right now, which is, you know, it's good and it's bad. It's good because it keeps competition among vendors, among cigar producers, among, you know, companies to blend a new, the best, you know, most fantastic cigar, and it's bad because, especially in regions like Cuba, where they're limited, very limited, because all of the tobacco is Cuban, they're not like, you know, say domestic cigar says okay we have this Nicaraguan tobacco but Dominican tobacco is, is short is on a shortfall so we'll have to add maybe some Honduran or some Cuban cigars can't do that they run out of tobacco they run out of fucking tobacco it's done you know and then you end up with a, a thing like you had in uh, 2000 you know 99 2000 2001 kind of range uh, where cigars you know quality suffers greatly and, and all that so enough talk I don't want to make this one an extremely long one tonight. I have other things going on, but I do want to get the review in, and I do want to enjoy it. And uh, so we're going to light up the uh, Robusto T. And like I said, because it's on the cusp of becoming vintage and prices are going to go up, I want to find out personally if I want to acquire some more of these. 
because if they, you know, they are what they are at this point. They, they'll be better maybe in another three years, but at this point, going on four, they're going to be like this for a while if they're good. Uh, vendors out there still do have them if you want to acquire them uh, for a you know moderate price. They're not that expensive. They come in boxes of twelve, uh, so you know they're really not you know you can get them for for you know without spending an arm and a leg. Anyway, let's light up and uh, get to it. We'll review it and we'll talk a little bit about Trinidad history, which is very interesting and. Uh, compare what we find to uh, some other notes that I found on the internet about the cigar. Okay, here we are. It is a nice still night. It's not too cold down here. The wind is not blowing. I don't know what temperature it is, but it's definitely higher than it was uh, a few days ago. We're going to give our cigar a nice little, nice little straight cut. Yeah, I'm gonna, you know what? Let me, you know, this is a short cigar, so let me make sure I just get just the cap. Sometimes I get excited and go <laughs> <laughs> The impatience swells up to want to get this thing in my mouth. Mm. Mm. Um, a very woody, very woody flavor. A little nutty, hints of what might be some kind of coffee-esque flavors going on. Tobacco's getting wet, I feel a little salt coming through. Mm. Mm. It's a nice tobacco of Cuban, uh, aroma of Cuban tobacco. Not too much else. I don't really smell anything chocolatey or anything. Okay. Let's see what we get. You know what? We're going to be pretentious today. And uh, light up with a cedar split. I'm going to uh, do a little trick that I do. Stick the match between... Here, we don't need that one stick the match between a couple of pieces and what this does is help you so you don't have to light the match and then stop to pick up the piece and light the piece. The match will light and get right into it. So you just gotta make sure I cut these a little little thin to make sure that you have enough to you know hold the match. Okay. That's a flame. That's another thing I like about doing this because you get a nice, nice roasting flame. I'm gonna have to. Mmm. Kind of a sweet, sourish aroma coming out of this thing. That's a light. That is a light. There we go. Mm. Oh. Interesting. Oh, all sorts of things going on now. Aside from the cedar, though, the cigar itself gave, gave off a very, very sweet, especially when baking, you know? When I go like this, now I'm getting more of a floral aroma as usual with Cuban tobacco to me. And, uh, you know, when I was baking the foot, all of a sudden I got this nice puff of, of a very sweet and sour, pungent smell. Nice draw. Nice draw. Very woody. Some salt coming through. Off the light, it tastes like a lot of other additional limitadas uh, I've smoked. They all use this, you know, wrapper that is very similar on a lot of them. It's 
very woody. There comes some coffee, some coffee notes in the back. Salt, Cuban tobacco, wood. Smooth, a little harsh up in the nasal area. A little bit of spice coming through. A little bit of spice coming through now. Nice. Nice. Okay, let's talk a little bit about brand. I did a little bit of uh, brand research. Most of these notes I got from Wiki, so they are, you know, they should be factual, but there can always be a discrepancy here and there. If you find one, you can always email me if you're upset about it. Uh, but if you want to really do everybody a favor, go to Wikipedia and change it. Um, because that's where I got most of these. Some of them I had the time to double check on. Others I didn't. Which ones, I don't know. I can't remember. Uh, but for the most part, everything I usually read on Wikipedia is, you know, not everything, but 90% of it is pretty much good information. Let me get this out of here. Got a really nice, even, even burn going on here. Very nice, even burn. And a good draw. A little tight, tiny, tiny bit tight, but tiny bit tighter than I like. But draw is, you know, a good draw is a good draw, a bad draw is a bad draw. Draw is pretty relative, uh, depending on the type of smoke you have. Some people like a really loose draw. Other people like a draw with a good amount of resistance. I like one that's somewhere in the middle, but a little bit on the looser side. Anyway, this, okay, this was first produced. I'm going to read from this. I didn't have the time to do my little memorization, so I can't look that professional right now. But um, first produced uh, in 1969, uh, according to Adriano Martinez, who it was a former Habanos SA executive. Uh, these are a lot of just interesting facts. You know, I can do a little bit about this because here's what I the impression I was under. I knew that uh, Trinidad is a fairly new brand. I knew that for a long time Trinidad was only a diplomatic gift handed out by Cuban uh, diplomatic officials. You know and it was not a cigar sold to the public in general. I was under the impression that Fidel Castro handed these out as uh, diplomatic gifts, and I have read this several times on Cuban cigar websites. Uh, I do know that uh, it was in 2003 that the brand first went public and they introduced three new sizes to the line. Uh, well, no, no. My dates, that might be when they introduced the three new sizes. Before that, I forget exactly when, they decided to release the brand to the public, uh, and they only made one size, a Funadori, which, as a diplomatic gift, was the Liguido number no. one, the same size as the Cohiba Lancero. And when they released it as to the public under that one size, they released it to the public under that one size before making it uh, a brand new brand and everything with the same old label, label that they used on the diplomatic gifts at first. And when they released that, according to this, uh, everything was the same about it except including the length blend, except that instead of a 40 it became a 38 or vice versa. We'll see from this. But that's about as much as I know. Mm. Well, I just inhaled some and very, very, very smooth. And I got a nice, uh, nice sour note right there, a bit of a sour note. Definitely not bitter, a nice little sour note on the tongue. Something that reminded me of the Partigas D4 we had for a second. But it's not really there constantly. We'll see if it builds up. You know, when I was reading this other review, the guy said, you know, right after he lit the cigar, as soon as he got like five minutes into it, he noticed that it would change on each and every puff. And I was thinking to myself, you know, after that shit we just figured out about how cigars burn and why cigars change the flavors the way they do, you know, cigars don't change their flavor on each and every puff. You may be able to sense uh, a different flavor on this puff versus that puff because you're puffing through a longer ash. You especially notice a change when you flick a one-inch ash that's been building up and then take a big hot draw. 
you know, and he even said, sometimes it was sweet, other times the, the sweet would dissipate and it would be overridden by spiciness. That sounds right there to me, you know, cool smoke, hot smoke. So, that is very short. And on a shorter cigar like this, on a short Robusto, you're going to notice that going on more often because, you know, the, the temperature starts increasing rapidly, unlike, unlike the way it would on a longer cigar like a Double Corona or a Churchill. Anyway, we'll go over a little bit of this. Uh, so, first produced in 1969, uh, according to the former Habano SSA exec, Adriano Martinez. Cigar aficionado, uh, early 90s, uh, interviewed uh, Avelino Lara. Avelino Lara was the owner of the uh, Liguido factory in Havana, Cuba, the famed, uh, legendary Liguido factory, where the Cohiba is, uh, was first produced, and still to this day, I believe, is produced. And I also heard, now, it didn't mention anything about this, but I was under, I'm under the impression that Avelino Lara is also the blender of the original Cuban Cohiba. So, he also, I know this from, from domestic cigars, he also helped establish the um, uh, Greycliff Resort in the Bahamas, where Greycliff cigars come from, 